Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we're going to go over the Bunker, the brand new titanium field watch from the Swiss watch company. Now this is a watch that I gave a preview of not too long ago, and that was with the review of their other new release, the Mark II Diver. Since there was a lot of interest in this Bunker, and perhaps more than that Diver itself, I decided to rush out a review especially as they've just gone up for sale. And as far as I know, they're going to be a direct sale and they are ready to ship. So no pre-order, no Kickstarter, they're just good to go. And as I mentioned in that Mark II video, this was a watch that was loaned to me. And when I'm done with it, I'm just going to ship it off to another reviewer. Now with that said, let's just get to it. The basic footprint of the bunker is going to be a great fit for most people as you're looking at a 41mm wide watch without and 44 with the crown, as well as a lug to lug of 47. Yet even though it's going to fit most wrists just fine, if you happen to be someone who likes smaller watches, like say 40 and under, you're going to think that this is too big. And at that point, it's just best to stick with some of the smaller Hamilton khakis. And especially so because this thing has a massive presence for its size. And that's all thanks to this wide and expansive dial. I mean, just looking at it, I kept getting the feel that it was a 42, maybe even a 43 because of that dial. But no, it's just a 41. Although, on the other hand, if you're someone that really loves a big presence, this is going to be right up your alley. And in that regard, this actually reminded me a lot of my Orient Star Outdoor. And that's another 41 millimeter wide watch that just has a big presence. Now, total thickness here is also great, or rather I should say total thinness, as this is just a hair over 10 millimeters, which really makes it ideal to wear with just about anything. As far as comfort on the wrist goes, I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, it's just over 50 grams and that's with its leather strap. And at that point, it's pretty hard to go wrong here. But the reason I said that it's pretty good is that because of that wide expansive dial, you also have a rather wide and flat case back. It's not a huge negative, and in some ways I just say it's more of an observation, as I did feel that on my wrist. And most of the time that I felt it, I was wearing this watch on its stock strap, which is pretty new and still needs some breaking in. When I threw it on something really flexible, like the silicon strap, it really just melted into my wrists and I completely forgot it was there. Rounding out the specs, we also have a wider 22mm lug width and a solid 100 meters of water resistance. And that's partly thanks to its screw down crown. So throw all of this together and you really have a recipe for a great everyday watch. The case itself seems to have a very smooth blasted finish to it as well as it has an extra scratch resistant coating. The overall design here isn't very complex, and when looking straight down, most of what you're going to see is that clean bezel, which is really acting as a rounded frame to highlight the dial. The case is very straightforward, with just a slight curvy flow to it as you see the lugs extending out, and that curviness is partially aided by a very narrow beveled edge on those lugs. Although, for the most part, the case design here really reminds me of almost every other traditional field watch I've seen. And traditional is also how I describe the screw down closed case back, which as usual contains all the particular particulars. Along the same lines, there are no crown guards here, just a narrow screw down crown that matches the finish. If you have larger hands, you might have some trouble unscrewing it, but personally I never had too much difficulty there always seemed to be just enough grip with the knurling to be able to unscrew it. And just in case you hadn't noticed, the lugs here are drilled, and that should really aid in strap changes. Sitting above the dial, we have a flat sapphire crystal, and that has a reported 16 layers of AR coating, which in a lot of ways is complete overkill, and especially so compared to some other brands. Yet that in a nutshell seems to be what the Swiss watch company is doing here with the bunker. With the recent sports watch, they seem to be pushing the limits of design, while here they seem to be keeping the design rather traditional, yet pushing the build quality as far as they can go. Currently there are three different colorways of the bunker. You have a classic black, a classic cream, and this one which I think is a little more unusual for a field watch. 
The dial is mostly gray with these hints of blue, and just depending on the light, that blue can be a lot more obvious. The dial itself has a flat finish and has these white highlights. There's a very detailed chapter ring along the edge of the dial, and that's right before you get to the indices. The indices aren't applied here, but rather a very, very thick application of paint. There's enough here that at some angles, you can clearly see there's some height to them, which then gives the watch a slight sense of depth. It's not a lot, but more than enough for a field watch, and more than enough for a watch that's this thin. While the other two colorways are going to be a bit more conservative, this one is a little bit different as the outline for the indices has a thin band of orange, and that does match the second hand, which gives the entire thing just a slight pop of color. And that combination of blue and orange might be one of the reasons that when I first saw this, I immediately started thinking it was a cross between a Hamilton and a Nomos. That and the dial design itself. Unlike most field watches that have a 12 hour track, this one has even Arabics that are then completed with dashes which isn't exclusively a Nomos thing, as some have said that it reminds them of a Seiko SARG-009. Regardless of what this reminds you of, I think it is a great design. It's very clear and easy to use, while still giving you a bit of a crosshair effect thanks to those dashes. Now, just inside the 12-hour indices, that's where things start to get a bit crowded. Just inside that, you have the smaller 24-hour track which is then followed by the logo and the brand at the top, as well as then the automatic text at the bottom and the ever important Swiss made tag below that. It might just be me, but at this point, I'd probably take that brand name off and just leave the logo to give the watch a cleaner look. Just above the six, you have a date window. And I would like to point out that they didn't cut off the six to make that date window. They just sort of smushed it a bit. Now the date window is rather small, but I think it's a great location, as it blends in a bit with the 24 hour track. I think a dateless version would look a lot cleaner, but for an everyday watch, I do prefer to have a date on it. Now moving on to the hands, we have a sword style hour and minute hand. And they're kind of a cross between a traditional sword and maybe a syringe hands, as they do have a rather pointed tip. Then completing the set, you have a very narrow orange arrow second hand with a small circular counterweight. The hands themselves have a brushed finish, which not only matches the flat dial, but also the blasted look of the case, which in a lot of ways really completes the all tool like look, as there's nothing really flashy or even reflective on the entire bunker. The hour hand here could be a little longer, but I think the minute and especially that second hand really look fantastic with the design. So let's move on to the loom here, and the loom is a reported 20 layers of X1 grade Superluminova, which for a field watch is really awesome. So for a quick comparison test, I threw it up against a bunch of divers, including Swiss watch company's own Mark I diver. And as you can see, the bunker is pretty much the last one standing, which would be impressive for a diver, yet flat out amazing for a field watch. Yet at this point, you all know that I can't leave well enough alone, so I just had to run one more test. This time it's up against two other great field watches, as well as a Citizen Nighthawk, and the best loom diver from this year, which is the Orient Star Diver. Now these are all great watches, but as expected, it really comes down to the bunker and the diver. And I gotta say that I'm really impressed with the bunker, and especially with the loom on the dial itself, as that just really hangs in there. Without some further testing, I think it's going to be hard to declare a straight winner here, as the Orient's dial is a little bit brighter, but it's pretty hard to make out that minute hand. Whereas as a whole, the bunker is dimmer, but you can barely make out the entire design just right before it blinks out. So I can hands down say that this is easily the best field watch I've seen when it comes to loom, and one of the best watches I've seen, period. But let's move on to the movement. Now, the Swiss watch company decided to use a Swiss Solita SW200, which is really a great movement for the price. It's equivalent to an ETA 2824, as you have a high beat movement, 38 hour power reserve, hacking, and hand winding. It's pretty much everything you could want at this price. 
And when it comes to the straps, well, I'm not exactly sure what the Swiss watch company is going to give with the watch. They sent the watch along in this really cool leather case. And I normally don't show the packaging, but I thought this one was particularly good. Inside was the watch, and it was on a leather strap. But in addition to that, they sent along two elastic straps. Now, just as with other watches from the Swiss watch company, the clearance here between the spring bar and the case is a bit tight. So you're going to need a set of curved spring bars to really use the full variety of straps out there. And I believe they mentioned they will send along a set with each watch. But let's start out with the two elastic straps they sent. One of which is gray and the other is sort of a blue gray. Not a whole lot of variety with these two. But as a whole, these elastic straps are pretty cool. It's a nice soft texture with a pretty interesting design. As rather than your typical elastic straps, these ones are secured with Velcro. They are a little hard to get on at first and they might need to stretch out a bit, but on the wrist, they are extremely comfortable. And last, we have a brownish leather strap, and this does come with matching titanium hardware. It's listed as only being genuine leather, but it really feels like a quality leather strap. It's nice and thick and has a great texture. It is a bit stiff at first and you will need to break it in over time, but style wise, it's spot on for the bunker. So let's start to wrap this thing up and briefly talk about value. I think there's going to be a slight discount for the first few days this is on sale, but after that, they're going to sit at 445, which for the most part puts them directly in competition with the steel Hamilton khakis that are out there as the specs as well as the price are going to be pretty similar. Although if you want a titanium Hamilton, then it's going to cost you a few hundred more. So in that regard, I think there's a lot of value here with the bunker. Slightly different dial designs between it and a hammy, but overall they have a similar feel. I think the bunker might also be an interesting proposition if you're someone that wanted a Hamilton, but were kind of put off when they changed movements, where they traded the high beat rate for an extended power reserve. So if you're one of those, this does give you an opportunity to get a great field watch that still has a high beat movement. Now, another Hamilton to point out, and this one is my personal favorite, is the Khaki King. Although as field watches go, it's kind of a different beast. It's sort of a dressier field watch. And granted, that is probably going to be a much more limited audience. But I'm pointing it out here because I think that might be one area where the bunker is lacking. Just for those that want something that's a little in between. Something with a little bit of flair, as this is really a pure tool watch, with an absolute focus on function and not so much flash. Now, as a whole, I really like the bunker, and I especially like this colorway. If you're more of a traditionalist when it comes to field watches, I think the other two colors are going to be right up your alley. But this one that mixes that slight blue tint with orange, I think it gives it a much more casual feel. So it is a little bit different, but I think it should still appeal to a lot of field watch fans, as it gives them something familiar, yet different enough from what they might currently own. The Bunker is a watch that honors the classic field watches of old, yet gives that design a slight twist with modern materials, as well as a stellar build quality. If you're someone that really loves the tooliest of tool watches, I think it's going to be pretty hard to go wrong with this one. But what do you think about the Swiss watch company Bunker? Let me know down below. Or if you can think of any other titanium field watches, let me know that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.